Hey folks, welcome to Roll of Law, a channel where a lawyer talks about geek stuff. So today I want to talk about how to make a character, because a lot of people out there are getting interested in Dungeons & Dragons, and are thinking, okay, I want to get started with this, but how do I make that first character, and how do I do so in a way where I'm going to end up with something that's fun to play, that I'm going to enjoy playing, that's got some life to it. Because if you can really uh, get into that character, if you can really... Uh, sort of mesh with that character, you're going to have a lot more fun than if you can't. So this is something that I think is really important to talk about, and there's a few methods I use when I'm making a character that I kind of wanted to share with you guys. The first thing I want to suggest, though, is that you talk to your DM, whoever's running your game, about what your setting looks like. Because if your setting is one thing versus another, that may constrain your options. If you're playing a game that's set in ancient Greece, then you may not be able to play certain concepts. They might not fit. On the other hand, that might also inspire you. That might be something that gives you an idea of something you want to play. Maybe, you know, you're playing a setting of ancient Rome and you think, I want to play a gladiator. That would be cool. That's nothing wrong with that. You should also f uh, figure out how your DM wants you to generate characters. And by generate characters, I mean generate the fundamental statistics that your character is going to use. Your strength, dexterity, constitution, intelligence, wisdom, and charisma. Because if you're, for instance, rolling a set of stats that it's in order, then you may be constrained by whatever stats you get. and You might want to roll first. However, most DMs are going to allow you to either adjust, uh, they might want you to roll stats, but let you pick which stats go where. Uh, if you're rolling stats, you probably want to roll stats before you go any further, simply because you're going to end up with a particular kind of spread or pattern of stats that may end up shaping things. Or your DM might be allowing you to use point buy, where you have a lot of control over what your stats ultimately look like. Or they might want you to use a standard array where your stats are set and you you sort of have a list of numbers and you plug them into which stat goes where. This is important to know because if you're playing a character who, for instance, um, has a, a really low stat, you know, some really big drawback, that's going to be something you might want to think about as you're sort of coming up with the idea. What is this person's sort of limitation in that fashion? Now, from there, there's a couple of methods I use. And one of them I sort of describe as the idea seed method. And what I mean by this is just you come up with some little element of the character and then build from there. On Lawyers and Dragons, I'm playing a character, uh, Gimlet Otter Fiegel. He's a criminal wizard. And the way I came up with this was actually that I was driving around in my car, um, and at the time I was doing more DMing, not playing. But I was coming up with voices that I could use for NPCs. I'm just practicing my DMing skills as I'm in the car, because driving around is boring sometimes. And so I came up with a voice, and it's got a bit of a variety of elements. People have described it in different ways, but... Then I started thinking, you know, this voice that I've come up with, who does this belong to? What kind of person is this? And I thought, well, this is probably somebody who's a little, little on the shady side, maybe not a villain, like a bad person, but somebody who maybe does some dishonest stuff from time to time. And then I built on it from there and sort of expanded and expanded. And eventually I ended up with sort of a full concept out of that. Now, by the time I've got this concept, all of the mechanical choices I'm making in terms of the race and the class and so forth are really a lot easier because I've already got a concept of what kind of person this is. And at the, that person, that, that idea is basically going to tell me what, you know, what race they are, what class they are. Now, that's sort of a one method and it's a very creative method. But it may be a challenge if you've never done this before, right? If you've never played another person, another character, it might be hard to sort of come up with that idea. Another thing you can do is just pick an inspiration from, you know, some sort of book or a movie or, you know, TV show, something like that. 
So, and this could be something that is a really popular thing or maybe not so much. You know, you could start with Zorro or you could start with Conan the Barbarian or you could start with, you know, any number of figures. And once you have that as sort of a basic idea, you're going to want to change it because if it's too obvious, if it's too much of a sort of ripoff, first of all, you're not going to, it's not going to have the same life for you because now it's somebody else's character. You want to do stuff to make it yours, to make this character your concept. But the other thing is you also don't want people to sit there and be easily calling your inspiration. You want you want to sort of vary it up a little bit so that you can make it something that's unique and that doesn't feel to everyone else like it's just um, a clone or a copy. Now, this method as well is also tends to make your mechanical choices a little easier because you'll already kind of have an idea of who this person is. And so if you're playing, you know, something that is similar to Conan, you know you're playing a barbarian. It's just that easy. Um, and you might have some choices. You know, you might be deciding, do I want to play this character as a dwarf? Maybe a human? Maybe an elf? Um, you know, maybe something else. Maybe it's a goblin barbarian. All of these things are perfectly, you know, acceptable ways to do it. And these are things that you can sort of go through and decide. Now, the last method is sometimes you just want to play a particular, you know, you might want to play a particular class. So you might say, you know what? I don't know what person I want to play yet, but I really want to play a wizard. And so you start with wizard and then you can start playing around but you're really going to have to, from there, use that as the seed of your idea and start building on it. But you might look at mechanical options. So you, you know, pull up your wizard. And when you're looking at this, uh, one of the things I very much recommend is that you look at the features. Each class gets a subclass. And the different, just to make things extra confusing, they don't call the subclasses subclasses. They call them different things for different classes. So wizards, they call it an arcane tradition. For paladins, they call it your sacred oath. Uh, for druids, it's, you know, which druid circle you are, and so on and so on and so on. But each of these classes at a certain level, and it'll be from levels one to three, and it varies based on class, you're going to pick something that will really shape what kind of, you know, what kind of wizard are you? What kind of fighter are you? And so you want to look at that as well. You're going to want to look at those options because that can give you some additional ideas as to what kind of character you're looking at. You know, if you're saying, I want to play a warlock, which is a class that is an arcane caster, but they get their powers by, uh, by basically making a deal with some sort of more powerful entity. Well, you might be a very different kind of character if you're an archfey warlock where you've made a deal with some sort of fairy creature versus a great old one uh, warlock where you've made a, the same kind of deal or some other sort of bargain for power with some kind of Lovecraftian entity, some, you know, creature from beyond space and time that man was not meant to know. All of these things may shape your thoughts as to what kind of things you're looking at. So this is a really important uh, feature to look at, and you're going to want to also uh, pick something that's going to be within your skill set. And, you know, if you're a starting player, there's two real traps that you can run into. And the first trap is picking something that's too easy and too boring, because as a new player, you kind of want to have things to do, right? But you don't want too many things to do. And so some classes can be very hard to manage if you're not sort of, if you don't have some expertise with them. So for a new player, I would probably suggest uh, avoiding uh, the fighter, believe it or not. Um, it's a fairly simple concept overall, but a lot of the fighter concepts can be very straightforward and it can be hard to, to have something different to do each turn. So I'm not a big fan of guiding new players towards fighters. Barbarians can be more fun. Um, first of all, 
it's always fun to smash things. But second of all, barbarians have a few more things they have to do. They get rage. They get reckless attack. They've got these choices that they have to make all the time with costs and benefits. And so barbarian, I think, is a better choice than fighter if you're a new player. Uh, on the other end of the scale, um, artificer, which is, you know, detailed in Tasha's Cauldron of Everything, is a fairly complicated class. Uh, similarly, Druid is a fairly complicated class. There's a lot of things to manage and worry about. Uh, beyond that, I think that everything sort of is... Those are the sort of the options I would recommend against. But if you really want to play a Druid, if you're looking at it and you're going, no, I want to play that person who is, you know, the, the guy who lives in the forest and, you know, commands the animals and the trees and all of That's the person I want to play then go ahead. Just keep in mind, it's going to be more work. Uh, I often recommend rogues. Rogues are a great starting class. So are clerics. Uh, clerics have spell casting, which is a little more complexity, but you don't make a whole lot of choices that can make your character difficult to play. And there's always something to do. And you're a fairly tough, resilient character. It's fairly forgiving of mistakes, of... You know, if you screw something up, you're probably not going to get killed and you're probably going to be able to keep going. So once you've got this uh, sort of concept and you're kind of marrying it up with a class, uh, you're also going to want to look at marrying it up with a, a particular, you know, race, which is sort of, are you a dwarf? Are you an elf? And then, you know, things build from there. But really... Uh, a lot of people focus on mechanics. And if you go online, you'll find very detailed guides on how to build a particular, you know, here's how to build the, you know, control wizard that dominates everything on the battlefield. Or here's how you build a really strong paladin multi-class. Okay, um, that's great. But at the end of the day, at least for me, Numerical advantage isn't what I find the most fun. Um, I am, I like a class, a character that I is that has personality, and not just personalities. And, but you should, you know, think about what what drives your character. You know, where did they grow up? What um, what are their motivations? Do they have any family members? It's really tempting to make a character who's an orphan who's got no connections, but it's actually, I find, better to make a character who is connected to the world, who has family, you know, who has friends, who has ties to things. And, you know, that way you can develop sort of a, a personality for this person. You know, how do they talk? What are their mannerisms? Do they have any interesting habits? Um, do they have any regrets? Do they have any goals? What are the things that really um, drive them? Um, I sometimes will sit there and I'll ask, um, I'll ask this character idea in, you know, and it's a person who doesn't exist, but just this concept of this character that I want to play, I might ask, how would they handle certain, um, classic ethical problems? You know, the problem of, let's say the shopkeeper has a cure for, you know, a, a sickness that is afflicting your wife, but they won't sell it to you. And, you know, you have money to, to pay for it, but they're just like, no, I, I'm not selling it. Uh, I don't want to sell this to you. Would you break into that place? Would you, you know, what would you be, what would this character be willing to do? These kinds of playing with the character in your head are a useful thing to get a better feel for them. I also think it's worthwhile to think of the concept of just style. What is your character's style? Like, how do they command attention when they walk into the room? Uh, if they go into the bar, are they the person who's sitting in the corner and keeping to themselves? Are they the person who is boisterously walking up to the bar, slamming their fist down and going, beer? What kind, you know, what is your style? Do you have a, you know, does this character have a particular mean, you know, manner of dress? Um, what? You know, to, is there a reason why they use one particular weapon versus versus another? You know, if they're armed with a scimitar, why? 
they're armed with a rapier. Why? You know, these kinds of concept or conceptual things are really helpful to play with in terms of getting a uh, a useful character. There's a few sort of things I would also recommend avoiding. And these are just sort of common tropes that lots of people like to play and they tend to work better in movies than they do in a game. And one of them is the uh, regressive loner. Lots of people want to play Batman, you know, where you're just like, I'm super tough. I don't need anybody. I keep to myself. And this doesn't work all that well in a game because you need to, you're going to have an adventuring group. You're playing this with your friends, right? You can't be super aloof because you need to work with those other people. As a starting character, as a first character, a character who is engaging and wants, wants to talk to people, wants to do things. Um, the other thing is you want to make a character who wants to adventure because it's really easy to build this idea up of a character who won't do the things that you need them to do to actually have adventures. You know, if you're playing sort of a cowardly character, uh, well, what motivates them to go on an adventure where they're going to face, you know, orcs who are armed with sharp pointy things and might actually kill people um, if they're, you know, if they're cowardly? you got to figure that out. You know, maybe there's somebody who is fundamentally terrified of the world, but also has a very strong sense of righteousness that overcomes that. And so even though they're terrified of those orcs out there, they're not going to let them, you know, maraud across the landscape. They will pick up a sword and they'll say, I'm going to go and, and do this. Uh, lots of people will fall into the trap of saying, you know, that's what my character would do for bad behaviors. And by bad behaviors, I mean things that are disruptive to the game because you're hostile to other um, other characters who are in your group or because, you know, you're just unwilling to to dig in on the actual adventure itself. Ultimately, you're the one who chooses who your character is. You make those choices. And if you find that you're making a character that wouldn't do that wouldn't behave well with other people, you should really reevaluate that. So the actual, I'm not, you know, you one thing you'll notice here is I haven't gone into a whole lot of detail on the mechanical process. Because the mechanical process, I think you're you're gonna be able to sort of walk through, hopefully with your dungeon master, but it's one thing to go through the the process of setting up which stats are which and so forth. It's a really other thing to come out of it with a character that you find a lot of fun to play and that everyone else around you finds fun, right? You don't want to just play a character uh, for you. You're playing a character for all the other people at the table as well. So you want to make sure that you're that you have that in mind. Anyway, I hope that this has been helpful. These are sort of the things I think about when I'm designing a character. And um, let me know if this is something that uh, that you found useful here or if it's uh, or if you'd like to hear more. Um, if you'd like a video more on the mechanical step by step process, I can do that. And uh, otherwise, I I've got a whole bunch of ideas and it's just a matter of finding the time to uh, to do them all. So I hope you've watched or I hope you've enjoyed this. Please like this video, share it with your friends, subscribe to see more of these videos. And uh, see you next time.